Welcome to the third lecture of module 5. In this lecture today, we shall discuss about the metal wire LED manufacturing. The content of this lecture starts with the history of the metal wire LED manufacturing. Then I will give a brief classification followed by our method. And then I shall discuss about a process particularly for metal LED manufacturing called as shape deposition modeling. It's a very unique process which utilizes some very unique deposition techniques as well as it doesn't really build the part in layers but build the parts in segments. In that, I'll discuss about the microcasting, steps to realize the product and the geometric input. So this is our classification. We have already seen the processes related to the polymer and the different variant of that. Now, our focus will be today on the processes those utilizes material as metal. Then of course, there could be different options for material flow, for machine kinematics, for energy source, for support mechanism. The possible options are highlighted here in the red color dot. So before we start our discussion, I would like to bring to your notice, although the first LED manufacturing process is considered to be the wet photopolymerization, but what I have found when I was searching for some patents on the metal LED manufacturing that the first patent for this particular technology was filed long back in 1920. So it is now a bit important for us like we just relook into our history of this metal LED manufacturing and then go ahead. Also the another benefit of this metal LED manufacturing processes most of the wire based systems or the powder feed based systems also but now as our focus is only on the wire based systems is that these processes can also be used for repairing purpose not only for building the part but for restoring the features also. So like I have mentioned the first patent which I have found for building the part which is called as the method of making the decorative articles by conventional MIG welding process was filed long back in 1920. So this is the patent number and I have you can easily find this also on Google patent and then go through what they have uh, disclosed in the patent for the invention. Furthermore, I have found a patent which was filed in 1930 and this patent was uh, disclosing a machine for reclaiming the worn brake drums. So as you can see roughly on this diagram, this is the machine they invented and this is the brake drum right this is the brake drum now if it is got worn out somewhere now here this one is nothing but the mig welding right this is the wire coming right and then it is pushing towards the tip and it is generating arc here now if this portion got worn out due to the physical contact with the another block now this portion is getting reclaimed or restored by utilizing the mig welding so the repairing by this technology was really invented long back in 1930. Then I have also found a US patent filed uh, in 1957 on apparatus for vacuum deposition of metals. So this is basically reassembling the electron beam based wire LED manufacturing process. Here you can see the entire thing is inside a vacuum which is created by a pump and then there is a wire coming from the top so the wire is getting melted by the electrons generated from the cathode of course you can see here there is a power supply applied between the electrode and the cathode and it is pulling the electrons with a very high velocity towards the substrate also another patent i have found was filed in 1966 and it is a method it is a method and apparatus for constructing the substantially circular cross section vessel by welding. So as you can see in their machine here, this is the welding gun, this is the MIG welding which uses wire as a raw material and there is a rotary table here, this is the rotary table. While here this MIG table can move in Z direction like this. 
Now this rotary table is continuously rotating and this MIG gun is going continuously up. As a result, you are able to generate the cylindrical objects. You keep on depositing, keep on depositing and you can build the big vessels by using this particular technique. So it is nothing but the LED manufacturing represented in a different way. Then I have found a patent which was filed in 1972 of utilizing multiple wires. So this is for example wire 1, this is wire 2 and this is wire 3 and they are generating the arc at the tip and depositing the material with a very high deposition rate. Although this patent is particularly for the MIG welding but definitely can be extrapolated for LED manufacturing as well where you can use multiple wires for creating the FGM or to increase the deposition rate. Such kind of welding guns are nowadays very much popular in LED manufacturing and they called as the tandem welding machines. The another patent which I have found was filed in 1979 and it uses the laser for depositing the material. Here the name is method for fabricating articles by sequential layer deposition. So here you can see this number one written here. This is nothing but the laser beam. Is it is focusing and then further defocusing at a particular spot on the part, which is creating a melton pool. In this molten pool, a wire is fed, which is represented here by number three. And then, as the wire is feeding into the molten pool, it got deposited and continuously the part got rotated and built the structure on it. So basically this is nothing but the laser wire entity manufacturing which was basically invented in 1979 as per this patent. Then I have found another patent which was filed in 1980 and that is corresponding to the method for coating thin film alloy on a substrate utilizing the inductive heating. So we have seen patents related to the wire entity manufacturing for MIG welding we have seen for electron beam, we have seen for laser and now we are seeing the wire IT manufacturing process where induction heating is used. So this is the electrode, you see this 11 number, this is the wire going towards this end and it is pushing forward through some pinch rollers, right? And these rollers are pushing it upward. As the wire goes up, it got heated up by the induction coils mounted here, this 17 number. And as the wire got heated up, it is becoming soft and further it got melted. Then a supply of air is coming from the back side and it pushes the molten droplets towards a substrate. Now the same analogy can be extended to create multiple layers as well. And therefore this can be considered as the initial point for wire IIT manufacturing based on induction heating. Then in 1992 I have found an article published in the International Solid Freeform Fabrication Symposium that is rapid prototyping using 3D welding. So these are the authors according to me, they basically took the technology forward and really built the real functional part by utilizing the welding gun. These are some of their initial prototypes by using the 3D welding. Then after that in 1997, I have found a patent that was particularly for mold shape deposition manufacturing. So basically this name further got popular that is shape deposition manufacturing SDM. But what they do, they build the part in hybridization with the another manufacturing process. So not only LED manufacturing process is used in their patent, they also invented that along with the LED manufacturing, if we use subtractive manufacturing for realizing the metallic objects, we will get the benefit of another level. So this is the initiation point of invention of the hybrid AM. The hybrid AM I will talk about later on in detail but now you can see when the additive and subtractive are used together in such a way that their benefits can be utilized to create a process is can be called as hybrid LED manufacturing process. However, there are several variants of hybrid LED manufacturing process. Those can be discussed later on. 
so this process anyway we are going to discuss in detail so i am not explaining what their diagram is saying but i will explain it while discussing about this process so now let me come back to the classification we have seen that really the metal wire additive manufacturing is not a very new technology we have seen the first patent was filed in 1920 and then after that almost each and every heat source which is currently used for melting the wire and depositing the material was really invented long back so our focus now today will be on the metal as a raw material which can deposit the material continuously however because very few processes are available for drop on demand we are also trying to develop a process on drop and demand based wire IIT manufacturing here in Guwahati then the machine kinematics such as the serial kinematics the parallel kinematics and the hybrid kinematics I will explain the energy sources will be used that like induction heating arc heating arc heating like MIG welding TIG welding or plasma welding so there are the three popular methods for arc TIG MIG and plasma arc welding then we can we shall also discuss about the processes those uses energy beam to melt the material and these energy beams could be either laser or it can be electron beam then further we shall also discuss about the possible support mechanism for metal wire IIT manufacturing of course metal cannot be dissolved in so easily in the water hence this option will not be available for the uh, metal as a raw material but other two options like acid bath and no support by tilting the part by, so that it is called as multi-axis kinematics also will be discussed for realizing the uh, overhanging features or an appropriate support mechanism so what i said is su uh, further summarized and i have eliminated all the options those are not going to be discussed in the metal wire based led manufacturing and hence only available options are kept on this slide now let us first discuss about the shape deposition manufacturing so shape deposition manufacturing like i have already mentioned does not build the part like the other id manufacturing do here it is basically create the parts in segments not in the layer by layer manner also like fdm process this process also uses two heads basically to deposit two different materials one corresponding to the support material another corresponding to the main material sgm is based on the premise that the invisible surface of the model will be the visible surface of the support and vice versa this is very important statement and going to help us a lot for understanding the process again so i'll repeat it that sgm is based on the premise that the invisible surface of the model will be the visible surface of the support and vice versa so let me just explain it to you briefly for example you want to build this part and you want to build it in this direction now if i look from the top i will not be able to see this particular surface right this feature and this surface and this surface are not really visible from the top so as this surface is having downward face at normal i'm not able to see it from the top therefore this region is requiring the support we have already discussed this in our capp part now to build this part in this orientation you need a support mechanism and assume that this is your support mechanism right now the statement says the invisible surface these are the invisible this is the invisible surface of the part in the build direction if i'm looking downward like this this is the invisible surface and this is the corresponding support so the invisible surface of the main material or the main part will be the visible surface for the support so this is the support and if i take this support out i can see its top surface right and if in a similar fashion if there is a invisible surface for the support that will be visible while building the part or corresponding to the time when we build the main object so this is statement invisible surface of the model will be visible surface of the support and vice versa is going to be the basic principle of sgm process so if the model is visible 
then first the model is made and if the model is invisible then supports are made this way model and support material are created alternatively the creation of model or support involve deposition and machining and therefore this is a hybrid process like i have already shown you in the patent also the far most advantage of utilizing a hybrid process along with the deposition is that you can obtain the high accuracy on the outer boundary like for example if you are building a part which looks like this now if i build it by the additive manufacturing i will be able to make it like this right it will be having some staircase effect like this now if i have a milling cutter as well so after deposition of each layer i am able to so after deposition of each layer i am able to machine also so when i deposit the first layer i'll be able to remove this ex excess material from here and similarly from here and in a similar fashion i'll be able to remove the excess material from everywhere and hence as a result you will get the exact same edge approximation as it was for the real part so basically the deposition creates the part with a very high speed the deposition rate is because very high when you use the mig welding like of gun and the five axis machining that by appropriately giving the ap proper edge approximation will give you the accuracy on the final part hence you are going to have the best part created by this combination also their process uses in situ short pinning process for relieving the stresses because when we deposit the molten material particularly for metal it is subjected to some residual stresses from inside to eliminate these residual stresses particularly of tensile residual stresses those are really not desirable in the final part get converted into the compressive residual stresses those are desirable by utilizing a process like short pinning they are able to use a variety of material meaning to say they are able to deposit the wax they are able to deposit the plastic material they are able to deposit composite but our focus will be mainly on the metal part of their machine because we, today we are going to discuss about the metal wire additive manufacturing because rest of their machines are as conventional as the other uh, additive manufacturing processes like fdm and all but this particular one will be very unique so like i said in order to make prototype of various material the following methods are used by their machine they use extrusion process for making the polymer part they use two part resin process they use two part resin system which is very similar to the vacuum casting they use hot wax dispenser to create the wax like part they use photo curable dispenser for making the photo polymerization like part and then this micro casting welding and thermal spraying and the laser welding these are the processes particularly for metal so these last four processes are particularly for metal and different variants of nothing but the welding process now of course we know welding we have already seen that it is it could be tig mig or laser or electron beam or uh, the plasma arc welding thermal spray also we know laser welding also known to us but what is this micro casting let us try to understand that because this one is their unique process which utilized to deposit the material and they call it as micro casting so in the micro casting the mig welding and the plasma welding are used together so as you are seeing in this diagram which i have made there is a mig welding gun here and there is a wire of the mig welding gun now this electrode or the wire of the mig welding gun is connected to the positive polarity and there is a plasma welding gun and there is a tungsten inside we know that in the plasma welding gun and it is connected with the negative polarity as a result a loop is completed right it is between the wire of the mig welding gun and the tungsten of the plasma gun therefore the arc and the plasma will be generated here between the mig wire and the plasma gun 
as the circuit is completed the arc will sustain and definitely it will melt the wire and if you continuously keep feeding the wire like in conventional mig welding we do as a result you will get nothing but the molten material in the droplet forms so microcasting is basically a welding process with deposit discrete superheated molten metal droplets to form dense metallurgically bonded structure material for microcasting include stainless steel and copper particularly in their study where the copper can be used as a support material and stainless steel can be used as the main material so i am writing here stainless steel as main material and copper as support material after completion of the part the whole thing is kept into the acid environment like in hno3 and the copper get dissolved it leaves the stainless steel behind so this is nothing but the acid bath method for removing the support as the arc is established between the tungsten electrode and the wire of the mig welding gun it can be noted that there is no need to complete the loop between the substrate so this process is neither really a mig welding process nor a tig welding process but it is creating a close loop between mig and tig welding or mig and plasma welding and creating the droplets for you it can be noted that these droplets should be superheated this is because they should have enough energy so that they can partially melt the substrate also if we will not melt the substrate and the droplets are not able to uh, create significant temperature change into the substrate then the metallurgical bonding may not occur therefore it is important that we melt the substrate also and it is true for all the metal additive manufacturing processes particularly for the wire or powder based process that wherever we create a whenever we try to develop LED manufacturing process we need not to think only about melting the wire we should think about melting the substrate as well so that you can get the proper bonding between the molten material and the substrate also when the droplets are falling onto the substrate and creating and partially melting it also they the temperature in the substrate can be observed like it is shown here approximately another very important issue usually occur is the oxidation right so to avoid the oxidation a laminar curtain of the shielding gas is provided this is the shielding gas to protect this molten pool or the droplet those are falling from the top so the entire environment this particular localized area what i am highlighting here is covered inside the shielding gas so this shielding gas is provided like a very laminar curtain around this so typically microcasting like i have already mentioned is used for depositing the stainless steel and the copper subsequently apart from microcasting they have also proposed that the deposition can be done by the conventional welding as well like the deposition can be done by mig welding or it can be done by the tig welding also however i'll just try to explain here how they have uh, classified the use of the mig welding process and tig welding process for realizing the features they say that the tungsten inert gas welding can be used to deposit the material precisely while the mig welding gun can be used to deposit the material with a very high deposition rate but we will have a compromisation on the deposition rate tig can deposit the material with a slightly lower deposition rate while mig can deposit the material with a slight higher deposition rate so this was their main uh, deposition technique for adding the material now it is time to understand how they build the part so in the conventional additive manufacturing process the molding material and the support material will be deposited only once per layer right like for example you got a cross section also the cross section or the region where the support material has to be deposited so we identify this sections in each layer in the conventional additive manufacturing and deposit the material like this is the reason for main material and this is the reason for support material right but in this case the model and support material may be deposited alternatively within the same layer so that at any time the region of deposition is free from undercut okay so 
it's not like alternatively we deposit first main material and then support material in each layer it may happen if there is no undercut is coming we keep on depositing the main material only and when required then only we deposit the support material so we create like segments of main material and segments of support material to fill the part also each such deposition of depositing the material is followed by a five axis machining operation as well so as you can see here this is the main material getting deposited and we are depositing the each layer cross section at the same time right so for example these are the layers in the conventional manufacturing process you could have deposit in layer by layer manner like this but here you are keep on adding the material and creating one segment of the main material of course the deposition will not give you very good accuracy therefore a cnc milling operation is used the five axis cnc milling operation and that gives the final finishing touch to this as a result if you build it in the conventional ready manufacturing you will get this staircase effect right and later on you have to work on it right to eliminate this but here you are just eliminating it in the machine itself now it is obvious that the slicing strategy adopted by sdm process is not conventional right and also this is slicing strategy is finally giving you the higher order edge approximation on the build part so this we will try to understand further that how it can be done so let me once again summarize it here uh, assume that they have somehow classified these segments where this blue color region is the support material and the yellow color is the main material so the rule is we do the slicing whenever there is a feature occur which is going from undercut to non undercut or overhang to non overhang or in the vice versa like from non overhang to overhang region let me just show you i am starting from the bottom and this is the yellow material i am observing as i am seeing up to this location there is only overhang right and then suddenly it is changing to non overhang region right hence i will create a slice here then the next slice will be that now you are having overhanging region here and non overhanging regions here then suddenly again overhanging region is starting here right therefore you will create another slice at this location further if you observe at this location the overhanging feature is again going to change to non overhang region hence another slice is made further if you look at this particular location you can see that the non overhanging region is now changing to overhanging region hence another slice is made here then further again at this location the overhanging region is changing to non overhanging region and here also the overhanging region is changing to the non overhanging region and luckily both are at the same level hence another slice is made and then the support as well as the main material are sliced together on these slicing locations i shall explain this in more detail after few slides but now let us try to understand that how it works so for example now if i take this particular segment which i am calling as segment b so this segment is consisted of three sub segments two corresponding to the support material and one corresponding to the main material now you see assume that the part has already built up to this location ah uh, assume that it is already built up to this so now after this position i need to build the further part so which part i will deposit first i cannot deposit this main material first because otherwise i will not have any support on these overhanging regions so first i will deposit this part number 1 and 2 that is corresponding to the support material once i'll create this support segments then they will provide the support for the main material and now i can deposit the main material but it is not always like only support material is going to support the main material in some cases in or in some segments the main material will also support the support material now look at this segment a which is this segment i am talking about only this segment just take it out and you will see in this segment there are two sub segments corresponding to the support material 
and one sub segments corresponding to the main material. Now, obviously, I cannot deposit this support material in this segment first. Here, I have to deposit this main material first. Because once I will deposit the main material, that is going to support my support material. And hence, first I will deposit the main material and then on top of it, I will build the support material. In a similar fashion, you can observe in the segment C as well. So, this follows not really I, or I should not really call it as the layer by layer manufacturing process and it is following some unique process. We will try to understand it more systematically in the subsequent slides. But the process is having a cycle. It is depositing the support. It is giving finishing to the support by using a milling operation and then it is depositing the main material and giving finishing to the main material. And this machining operation for giving the finishing can be either vertical milling machine or it can be tilted by like 5 axis CNC machine also. While building the part by this technology, you can even embed the different type of other materials into the final part and also you can use multiple materials depositing locally. This is one example shown here and these are some in situ processes of SDM. Like you can have the multi material and you can even embed the structures into it. Right. So, for example, you are at this segment, assume that you are at this segment. So, I am writing it as segment A. This segment is consisted of three segments of the support material. It is consisted of one segment of the embedded structure, one segment of the another material and two segments of the main material. Now, of course, you can see which can be deposited first. Of course, I can deposit the support material number one first, then I can deposit support material number two first and then I can deposit the embedded structure. Then after that, I can deposit the another material that is the third material by utilizing uh, this particular sub segment in this segment and then I can deposit the main material. Now, it is because it is supported from all the reason. It is supported from here, it is supported from here, it is supported from here, right? And then I can deposit this particular sub segment. And in the end, I can deposit the sub segment of the support structure number 3. And this is how this entire segment can be created. Similarly, we can follow the rule for the entire layer. So, now how do we really process the geometry for SGM process? Slicing or the part decomposition. A better word will be part decomposition in this case because we are not really doing the slicing like we do in the conventional AM. How we do? So, we start from the bottom and then while going upward, if any part, if any part changes from undercut to non-undercut or non-undercut to undercut, meaning to say the vice versa of this undercut to non-undercut there will be a slice at that location or we will make a horizontal slicing at that location. In other words, whenever the normal of the STL triangle become horizontal, that triangle is prospective candidate for the slicing plane. It can be easily seen. For example, this is the curved layer you have, right? This is the reason if I am looking from the outside, right? Assume that this is the portion I am building. It is solid from here, this end. So, these triangles are having all the downward faces, uh, the facet normals are downward, then the facet normals are upward for this. There will be a triangle for sure that is going to have the horizontal facet normal and that will be the triangle corresponding to the slice. That is in another word if you are dealing with the STL file for making the slices for this particular uh, methodology. Now, how do we process each slice? The part to be built will be contained within a volume obtained by extruding Z siloth of the object. Every slice will be contained within this siloth. In each slice within this slot, will, we will have the region of model and the support material correspondingly. Now, the task is to identify the sequence in which the model and support region should be deposited. 
the tentative procedure which I am explaining to right now for this could be the following. First of all, you should identify any support or model region visible from the top. Push it into the queue one by one. If more than one are visible, then one can apply some criteria such as the largest in the volume will be deposited first and the least in the volume will be deposited in the end. As and when it has been added to this queue and the corresponding material to the layer and updated the shape of the current layer. Repeat these two processes above till all the reasons are added in the queue. These reasons can be arranged in a graph called adjacency graph. As there could be multiple options for to further identify the uh, final minimal proceeding graphs which I will tell in the next slide to identify that minimal proceeding graph. So by traversing across the adjacency graph of all the layers it may be deposit to club some of them. This means that this is not a pure layer by layer manufacturing and hence you have to follow some different kind of rules here. Let us come back. Now the whole process which I have explained in the previous slide I am going to summarize through this case study and you will be able to understand it very easily now. Assume that this is the part I want to build. Of course, if you have the STL file of this part, you can easily identify the support required and you can generate the support as well. So in this case, this is going to be the support. So the support I am writing here, this is support and this is also support, right? And this green color is the main material. Now I will focus on the main material and I will show you where the slicing could be and the where the slicing cannot be. Now you start from this point and then go up. There is no overhang, no overhang, no overhang up to this position. So there will be a slice at this because this particular feature is now changing from non overhang to overhang, right? So there is a slice here. Then we'll keep on going and we found that then at this location, this non overhang region is changing to overhang region. Hence, there will be a slice here as well. Then this overhang region is changing to non overhang region. Hence, there could be a slice at this plane as well. So in summary, these will be the slicing planes. Now, my objective will be to identify each and every segment from here, right? So how many segments you are seeing now? Let me just clear these red lines so that you can see that clearly. I have already created the lines corresponding to the slices. Now the segments are clearly visible. This is my segment 1, this is my segment 2, this is my segment 3, this is my segment 4. Then this is the segment 5, this is the segment 6 and this is the segment 7. Our first aim now will be to create the adjacent graph or the adjacency graph. What adjacency graph says, we will write each and every segment here and we will make an arrow corresponding to the adjacent segment to that. So let us start from segment number 1. So the segment number 1 is written here. The adjacent segment to this segment number 1 is segment number 6, the segment number 2 and the segment number 5. So there are three segments adjacent to segment number 1. Therefore, I am writing segment 6, segment 2 and segment 5 and connecting them by arrow saying that the neighbor to 1 is 6, neighbor to 1 is 2 also, neighbor to 1 is 5 also. Then look at segment number 2. The adjacent or the neighbor of the number 2 segment are of course number 6 therefore there is an arrow here. Also 2 is having a neighbor number 7 and 2 is having a neighbor number 3 and 2 is having a neighbor number 5. Right? So therefore these arrows are now made. Now look at the segment number 5. Segment 5 is having 3 neighbor, 3, 2 and 1. So 1 and 2 are already there so I made an arrow. Then 3 I created and it, I, I have made an arrow corresponding to 3 also. Then in a similar fashion, 4 is also a neighbor to 5 as this is the neighbor, it is connected 
uh, at least by one point it is neighbor so it is neighbor to five also number four so i connected it also by uh, an arrow also number four is a neighbor of number three and number seven as well therefore connected by arrow so all the neighbor segments are now connected appropriately and this we are calling as adjacency graph right now let us try to find out the minimal preceding graph meaning to say we will now move from the top and go towards the bottom and identify in each layer whether it is possible to build this segment or not possible to build this segment before depositing the another segment let us start from the one only so as one is not having look at the section number one th this uh, segment number one it looks something like this right everything is visible from top means it doesn't have any overhanging feature right everything is supported that means yes i can build number one first without any issue then after number one can i build number five because this is coming to the adjacent to this so i will look at number five can i build number five no i cannot build because there is a large overhang here this one this i cannot accommodate right and because there is no material here deposited till now only one is deposited that hence f uh, the fifth number is eliminated then i'll check whether i can deposit number two segment no number two segment can also be not deposited because it is having a overhang here so after one two cannot be deposited then i look at the third option which is number six yes six can be deposited because it is not having any overhanging feature when it is deposited and because it is not having any unsupported overhanging region right the overhanging feature is already supported by number one so this number six can be not deposited of course this number six is not the main material it is the support material therefore the deposition of segment number six will be done by the another nozzle right so we have written number six here then after that i will see which uh, segment i can deposit so adjacent to number six only number two is there or number one number one is already deposited and we are not anyway going up above uh, at a level we are going always downward so after that we are seeing only option available after six is number two and yes i can deposit also number 2 because number 2 is now completely supported by number 6 all the overhanging regions are supported by number 1 and number 6 therefore the number 2 can be deposited now therefore i am writing number 2 here now let us check what are the option now 2 can after 2 we can deposit 3 so if you look here if i want to deposit number 3 after 2 it is not possible because there will be overhang here and this overhang is supported by 5 and we have not deposited 5 yet therefore we cannot do anything and hence will not deposit 3 there is no option so this is removed right this possibility is removed then i will see that if i deposit after 2 5 is it possible or not yes that is possible because this region which was earlier unsupported is now supported by number 2 segment and number 1 segment is also supporting its some of the overhang region and hence the number 5 segment can be deposited now so i can go for number 5 now let us see whether i can deposit number 7 also yes it is possible to deposit number 7 as well because all the overhang region of the number 7 which is here is supported by number 2 and 2 is already deposited then i can say number 7 can also be deposited after that on another level number 3 is there now let us look at number 3 that if i deposit number 7 then after that can i deposit number 3 no you cannot deposit number 3 after that because it is it's still not supported hence i cannot deposit number 3 but if i am depositing number 7 after number 2 i can deposit number 4 right because it is supported right it is supported here in this region therefore i can deposit number 4 in a similar fashion to complete the process i can deposit then number 5 then after that i can deposit number 3 easily because this region is supported by number 5 the overhang region of the number 3 is supported by number 5 hence i can deposit number 3 segment and then later on in the end i can deposit number 4 so this is called as minimal preceding graph 
once i have the minimal preceding graph i can move to any of its trajectory and choose the option appropriately so once i have the minimal preceding graph i can make the building tree building tree could have multiple options also so like i look here first i can deposit number 1 then i can deposit number 6 then i can deposit number 2 now i have two options either i can deposit number 5 after that or i can deposit number 7 after that if i deposit number 5 after that right then i have two options either i can deposit number 3 and then number 7 and then number 4 or i can deposit number 5 then after that number 7 or number 3 and number 4 then also i have multiple options available like if i go on the right side of this graph that is if i deposit number 7 then after depositing number 7 i can deposit number 5 and then if i deposit number 5 after that i can deposit number 3 and then i can deposit number 4 so this is the final building tree let us look at all these options available with us so this is the number one option right the number one option says i deposit the segment number 1 then segment number 6 then segment number 2 then after that i have two options either i build segment number 5 or i build segment number 7 this is segment number 7 if i build segment number 5 i have further two options now i can build the segment number 3 or i can build segment number 7 after building segment number 3 i can build segment number 7 then i can build the segment number 4 or if i go to the another route this route then after segment number 7 i can deposit segment number 3 and then segment number 4 again like here if i follow this route on the top then i can deposit segment number 7 and then after that i can deposit segment number 5 it is fully supported then i can deposit the segment at the center that is segment number 3 and then i can deposit segment number 4 so this is the final answer now quickly let us see one more example and it is asked that draw the minimal precedence graph for realizing the following object using sdm process in the given orientation so the build orientation is this of course you have already learned that how to calculate the stl file uh, how to calculate the support from the stl file and of course in this region you can see this is the region corresponding to the support right this is the region of course it is so this is the support then after that i will look at where the features are changing its definitions like this is the overhang 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 feature till this point and then after that it is non overhang so first slice will be here then the second slice like this is the non overhang non overhang and this is also non overhang non overhang and suddenly it is becoming overhang at this location hence there will be another slice at this location so these are going to be the two slices hence i am going to have the segment i'll call it as segment 1 this will be segment 2 this will be segment 3 this will be segment 4 maybe this is 5 this is 6 or this is 7 any number you can give appropriately also it can be noticed that in if you have some more smarter algorithm you can identify that segment number 3 4 and 7 they are they or they can build all together also because they are not having any overhanging reason in the uh, entire support and therefore you can convert it to only instead of seven segments only in five segments also so how the five segments will look like something like this right So now I have segment number one, segment number two, or segment number three, four, and five. Of course, first I'll make the adjacent graph. So let me consider this particular part first. This is the fourth number segment. Fourth number segment's adjacent is number one only. Then number one's uh, neighbor are number two and number five. Number two and number five. Now I look at number five's neighbor are two, three, and one. So two. 3 and of course one is already connected then the neighbor of 2 are 3 so it is mentioned here of course its neighbor is 5 1 and 3 already so the, the arrows are already corresponding to that now the neighbor of 3 are 2 and 5 
so the two and five are uh, made here or connected by the line. So this is the adjacent graph. All the segments, those are neighbor, are connected by the arrow. Now let us consider a mini minimal preceding graph. So for example, if I deposit four, yes, I can deposit four. It is not having any overhang. Then can I deposit number one? Yes, I can deposit number one because all the overhanging region of number one are supported by the segment number four. Therefore, I can deposit number one. Then after number one, can I deposit number two? Yes, I can deposit number two as well, as well as I can deposit number five. So like I said, in such case, when you have multiple options, you can use your own criteria. Like I am using a criteria of the object, which is of maximum volume will be deposited first. So of course, five is the of maximum volume. Hence, I am depositing five first. Then after depositing five, of course, I can deposit two. They both can be deposited either two or five, not, not, not any issue. But I am choosing five first because of its large volume. Then after depositing two, I can deposit now three. Why? Because the overhanging region of the three are completely supported by five and which is already deposited at previous level. And this is the minimal preceding graph. Fine. So as a result, your part will look like this. Minimal uh, first I'll deposit the segment number four, then segment number one, then segment number five, then segment number two, then segment number three, and finally my part is over. Of course, each and every segment deposition will be followed by a machining operation. Because for example, if you are depositing this part by depositing the material, you may not get such a smooth slant wall. You may end up with getting something like this, right? Because you are keep on depositing. Then a milling operation will be used and that milling cutter will remove the excess material and give you the final good finishing. And then you deposit the next material or the next segment. So this is how the classical SDM process works. This is considered to be the first wire metal LED manufacturing process as per my knowledge and build the part not in layer by layer fashion, but in segments. So with this, thank you very much. We shall continue our discussion on the other wire based LED manufacturing processes in the next lecture.